West Ham have been linked with a player, Terem Moffi, Nigerian striker, and I think the link is believable. I believe this one. I'm going to explain why in just a second before we get on to the player. And more importantly, uh, it, it brings up a very, very important question about what's going on with West Ham at the moment. Look, we've been doing this Hammers Chat Malarkey for quite a while now, and not a day goes by, 365 days a year, not a day goes by without there being a West Ham transfer story. Regardless of whether we have any legitimate interest in a player, regardless of whether we're not out to buy anyone, and, and it might be on a day that's right slap bang in between transfer windows and nothing is happening, there'll still be a story there. As you go on, as you do it, you start to compartmentalise uh, and section off where these stories have come from. So you'll have your more trusted outlets and you'll have some that you just don't trust at all because, well, I'll, I'll tell you now, my least favourite is a website called Court Offside. Uh, Court Offside could tell me that water was wet and the sky was blue and I wouldn't believe them. I, I don't believe they transfer room anything. I think, I suspect, and just my opinion, that a lot of it is made up. So you have that on one end of the scale and you've got the other end of the scale, which, you know, maybe, you know, some of you might think Fabrizio Romano or for us, you know, Dharma Chef, maybe. Uh, Dharma doesn't have time. He's got to deal with every club in the Premier League and a lot of them in Europe. He doesn't have time to deal with the, the general tittle-tattle, the small rumours of, of every club. 20 rumours for every club a day is just not going to be conducive to him producing, you know, good, good content and good news. Uh, so for that reason... I, I, I sort of do cherry pick what, what I believe and what I don't. Uh, this particular transfer rumour I find believable um, and because of the sources it's come from. So, I mean, Sky were reporting it last night. It, you just then start looking around. OK, we'll talk sport, we're talking about it. The Athletic uh, are writing about it. And also there are a, a number of journalists who not only have the ear of, of some of our board members, but also uh, get briefed by agents. And as I say, you, you get... You just get to start trust. So sometimes a story just feels true. And for me, this is one of those. Uh, look, we'll talk about the player briefly, but this really, this video really isn't, the story is not about the player. So we've been 25 million, let me just get this right, plus 5 million in add-ons. Uh, so it is a Terran Moffi, Nigerian uh, player, 23 years of age, uh, plays for FC Lorient. And uh, he's the second top goal scorer in in Ligue 1, Ligue 1, as they'd probably say, uh, in the French League this season. Uh, only Kylian Mbappe has scored more goals than this chap. They're doing really well. Uh, I've had a look. We've, we've got a little, um, we, basically, we've got a little Patreon chat for, for our patrons. And um, a few of the lads uh, were chatting in it earlier and, and, uh, and somebody posted up a video. I say the lads are the ladies as well, of course. And um, somebody posted up a video, so I had a little look at this guy. Uh, Fast striker, six foot two. I couldn't tell he was six foot two from the video. I, I read the stats, obviously. Good player. Um, very left footed. He's a finisher. A uh, bit of a fox in the box, if you like, but able to stretch defences. It's hard to tell with these players. You don't know if they're going to settle or not, which is another thing to worry about. We'll discuss that another time. Last few minutes, there's bringing a player and David Moore saying, oh, I don't know if he's going to settle. Probably wouldn't use that voice, Moisey, would he? Anyway. The reason I'm hurrying through all this stuff is the real story is somewhere else, and that's where the money's come from. But suffice to say, he looks to be a decent enough player. Uh, and you only had to watch that Wolves game. This guy would have been better than anything we had up there for Wolves, basically. There's another, there's another part to this, which I don't want to get into yet, is do we have the supply line to supply a player like that? I think there's bigger problems at West Ham than just the striker. I mentioned this yesterday. There's more than the one problem. But that's, that's a story. That's, a, that's for a different day. I want to talk about the money. Where is this money coming from? We've already, I've already said that I believe this story to be true. And, and I do. So if I do, then, and we're serious about this, it means we're willing to spend... Another twenty-five million pound. That takes our spend this season to over two hundred million pounds. That tells you something. Forget all the forget all the noise. Forget all the background noise in this. There's a very very clear message, and that somebody has got serious money at West Ham, and somebody is very very happy to pump. Well, they might not be very happy, but somebody is has an intent. Somebody wants to pump serious money in there. I find it very hard to believe that this is just David Sullivan. I find it very hard to think that this is just a panic buy. 
And it's made me quite suspicious, to be perfectly honest with you. There's a whole Kretin uh, Daniel Kretinsky dynamic in this. I, I thought for some time, if you're a regular watcher of the channel, you will know I thought for some time there would come a point when David uh, Sullivan gets a phone call from Daniel Kretinsky and says, well, what's going on here? The, the, phone, the phone again, obviously. Hold on. The phone's not like that. What's going on here? He'll probably take his cover off it. it hold on. What's going on here, Mr. Sullivan? I, I understand that you are trying to uh, get behind your manager, but it's getting silly. I've got £150 million invested in this company and uh, I need you to uh, to sort it out, basically. You need to get rid of the manager. I thought, anyway, I, you, you get the idea. There's no one actually there. Uh, I thought that call was coming. So I do believe there's investment there from somebody and I do believe that investment is probably from Daniel Kretinsky, but there's something else here which is, which is really making me wonder about this. And that is, why has he not, why has David Sullivan not sacked the manager yet? So here's, here's my theory. It, it might not be true, but it's, it's all I've got at the moment. David Sullivan has agreed to sell the club. And whoever he's going to sell the club to, be it Kretinsky or, or anybody else, that sale is predicated upon us having Premier League status. No Premier League status, no sale. Obviously. What, well, there's, there's, there's no point even explaining it. You, you, you understand. Championship, the value of the club plummets. They want 650 million, no chance in the championship. 20% um, of that, at best. At, at best. As, as, anyway, as an investment strategy, that it's bloody awful, quite frankly. So what I think, whoever is... So anyway, there's something very interesting. There's, there's some messaging. This ties in with the messaging about the manager. They've been discussing or leaking news over the last 24 hours about any potential new manager. That there are two, two sets of candidates, short-term candidates. We discussed a few of them yesterday, but Benitez was in there. Nuno Espirito Santo, um, whatever, some others, Sean Dyche. Short-term candidates. And then there's some long-term candidates. The long-term candidates, well, they're over there, obviously. Short-term candidates, long-term candidates. These ones are secret squirrel, OK? We're not meant to know about these. This is the secret stuff. Why would there be short and long-term? Why, why, why would we do this just to dig ourselves out of the mire? Surely, if that's what you wanted to do, there's... You can do a caretaker manager. There's numerous things you can do. I just think the more I hear, the more it leads me to believe... A takeover. So basically, I believe that there is going to be a takeover. The long-term candidate is going to be appointed by whoever the new guy may be. That's why David Sullivan has been reluctant to sack David Moyes, because David Moyes is going at the end of the season anyway. And what he doesn't want to do is commit himself to a severance package, bring somebody else in when he knows the new guy is going to be booted out anyway, because clearly, whoever's bankrolling this £200 million, and there's clearly more of it there, wants to give whoever the new manager is, some money. I find it very, very hard to believe that this striker, this Moffy, would be the result of David Moyes' scouting or Rob Newman. That, that I, I doubt very much it is. Why would you... We already... Look, it's an open secret that David Moyes has one game left to save his job against Everton. Why would you bequeath a player, a £25 million player, to a manager who might be just about to lose his job? I just don't think you would. You can take this where you want in terms of trying to figure it out, and it's hard, and, and all you can do is really try and guess what's going to happen because, you know, maybe just maybe they know who the next manager is and maybe he likes this player. Maybe they've spoken to the short-term guy coming in, it's Sean Dyche, and Sean Dyche has said, I like this player, bring him in. The truth is we don't know, and all we can do is speculate on it, really. But it does make no sense for David Moyes to bring him in. This could be anyone. This could be a Sullivan special. It really could. In terms of choosing the player. But by spending this money, there is a really clear message. And, and the message has been clear all season. I don't know. We, we already were the third highest net spend in the world. I, I say Europe, if it's Europe, is also the world. I don't know if this takes us above Man United and make us the second biggest. I, I don't know. But my word, that's intent. 
The intent in the summer, of course, is we are going to spend our way into the Champions League. It's not happened. But the, make no mistake about it, that's what that money was for, that £180 million. That was the intent of it. It's not worked out that way at all. We're going to spend our way into, into contention. And if we've already spent that money, let, the coffers should be empty. So that money's coming from somewhere. Even if that money's been promised by somebody else, it's coming from somewhere. So now we're in a situation where well, we're going to spend our way out of this mess. And, and I think we should. I think we do need to be buying players. But we, we, we heard very, very recently, you know, OK, there's, we might be able to bring in a loan or two. Then we heard, actually, we will, we will supply David Moyes with a striker if he needs it. But then we heard that David Moyes says he doesn't need a striker. And now you see that maybe the intent is switching. Well, actually, do you know what? Uh, sorry, it wasn't, it, wasn't really, it wasn't really a question. It wasn't really an offer. We're giving you a striker. We're buying a striker. They're not fools. David Sullivan might be moving very slowly on this, but he's nobody's fool. David Sullivan has bought players before. And David Moyes hasn't used them. He's bought players before and Sam Allardyce hasn't used them. It'll have happened at Birmingham. I have no doubt about it. David Sullivan will be infinitely aware that David Moyes can spend money and not use a player. Vlasic, who, who signed him? I mean, we don't even know. D -d Depends which newspaper you read. He was anywhere between 20 and 30 million, Vlasic. <laughs> but David Moyes certainly... Um, was happy not to play him. But we've only got we've got the Ben Rama situation at the moment. Ben Rama, twenty four million something like that. Just because we're going to spend twenty million plus five million add-ons on this Nigerian striker doesn't mean David Moyes will play him. So I, I, I think this is a transfer irrespective of David Moyes. Actually, I think there'll be precious little stomach, precious little. Um, desire amongst the board members to buy a striker and hear that David Moyes is saying oh, he's not ready and to see him not feature. David Moyes doesn't have that credit in the bank. And this is why I cannot help but think that this has very, very little to do with David Moyes. Sometimes you get adjusted to, well, they say you don't notice small change. Sometimes you just get adjusted to it. Take yourself out of out of that period of adjustment and then just take yourself back if you can. Cast your mind back to a little while ago, 200 million Pound spend, West Ham in one season are spending two hundred million pounds. As I say, we've sort of almost got used to it because the the hundred eighty million, yeah, we sort of know about that. So this is just a bit more in top. It's crazy. I, I'm not entirely sure what our turnover was, and I think we had a record year last year. But normally it's about hundred ninety million. I might be a few million out, but we're spending more than our annual turnover. That's massive. And I know transfer fees are paid over a five-year period. I absolutely get that. But we're still paying off other transfer fees that are there. I'd love to know where this money's coming from. But it very much, I think, points to whoever's behind the scenes and wants to buy the club being desperate that West Ham stay in the Premier League or... David Sullivan being, Sullivan being so desperate that West Ham remain in the Premier League because he knows if they go down that he won't be able to sell the club to whoever he's agreed to sell the club to. But it does beg one really interesting question. If David Sullivan is so concerned about West Ham's Premier League status that he's been willing to spend 200 million this season to ensure they stay exactly there. Why has he spent so much time delaying on David Moyes? <laughs>